Every time a goal is scored in La Liga, Goldman Sachs and Co. will earn more than 170,000 euros. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. With football having risen to a global billion dollar business, the people who control the money are becoming more powerful and start pulling the strings. Real Madrid's stadium, the sale of Chelsea, Barcelona's debt, the European Super League. When money moves in football, banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs are not far away. This money buys power. The big American banks see European football as an untapped market. They all want a piece. As clubs take out more loans and invest in infrastructure, this influence only grows. They already tried to change the structure of European football with the Super League. That failed. Now they are putting their money into clubs and leagues. Welcome to Athletic Interest and how JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs are taking control of football. Money didn't always have such a big influence in football. The first winner of the Ballon d'Or earned just 15 pounds per week. Many top-level players even took second jobs. When Stuart Pearce joined Nottingham Forest in 85, he continued to work as an electrician. He even advertised his services in the matchday program. Historically, football clubs didn't have a lot of money. Everything changed in the early 90s. A breakaway group of England's top clubs formed the Premier League. This gave the clubs greater control over TV rights. Collectively, they agreed an exclusive deal with Sky worth 60 million per year, an almost 50% increase on the previous deal. Football finances changed overnight. Here's how. Clubs get income from three sources. Ticket sales, commercial deals and broadcasting. Ticket sales is how clubs traditionally made most of their money. But stadium capacity limited any growth. Commercial deals include shirt sponsorship and official partners. These have grown as football reached new audiences. Broadcasting deals were historically the smallest. But as technology improved, football's TV audience started to grow. Soon it was expanding across the globe. The Premier League claims to have an audience of almost 5 billion people. The value of TV rights has followed this trend. Not just in England, but across Europe. Broadcasting revenue has become the biggest source of income for most clubs. Europe's top five leagues have increased their combined yearly income by more than 1,000% in less than 20 years. But playing at the top level also comes with a high cost. In 84, the average player in England's top league earned around £25,000 per year. Today, the average is 3 million. Clubs in Europe now pay more than half of their income as player salaries. The cost of buying players on the transfer market has also increased. In just over 10 years, clubs have tripled their yearly transfer spending. Studies claim that the more a club spends, the more points they get in the league. That's the new reality of football. Money equals success. So, the more access to money, the more success you might have. And where can you get money from? A rich oligarch, a state fund, or banks. Together, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs control almost $5 trillion worth of assets. With this money, you could stack $1 bills to the moon and still have a quarter billion left. Investments range from tennis balls to long-range missiles. In recent years, attention has turned to football. Real Madrid's new billion-dollar stadium, financed by JP Morgan. Barcelona's new stadium, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Jim Ratcliffe buying Man United, this guy buying Chelsea. You guessed it. Then there is their most controversial strategy. No, not this one. We will get back to that a little later. In 2021, La Liga agreed a deal with CVC Capital Partners and JP Morgan. La Liga received 2 billion euros. The banks got 8% of future TV revenue for the next 50 years. CVC has a similar agreement with Ligue 1. A previous attempt to agree a deal with the Bundesliga was met with fan protests. These deals give clubs early access to future cash. Perfect for investing in success. But fans are not happy. There is fear that private equity having a stake in the league's commercial rights will dilute the power of the clubs and its members. Will the league make future decisions on what's best for the fans or for the banks? These banks now have billions invested in European football. But what do they get in return? JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs are convinced that European football is undervalued. The logic is simple. Europe's top five leagues have the biggest fan bases in sport, and yet they make less money than the NFL. Europe's leagues can catch up in two areas, ticket sales and TV deals. NFL games average 70,000 spectators. 
Premier League games average 40,000. This isn't because the NFL is more popular. Football stadiums in Europe are simply smaller. The solution? Build better stadiums. That doesn't just mean bigger. New stadiums are more versatile. This allows clubs to host more events, maximizing revenue. Just watch our video about the new Santiago Bernabeu. Around 200 million people watched the 2024 Super Bowl. Three times more people watch El Clasico each year. Can you guess which one makes more money from TV? TV rights in European football are considered undervalued. They may have started to stagnate domestically, but they continue to grow internationally. That's why JP Morgan wanted a share of La Liga's future TV revenue. And why banks get involved in new stadiums. All predictions point up. But this money comes with strings attached. JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs now hold a large amount of power in European football. Whenever a club is put up for sale, it's usually one of these two that controls the process. This means they decide who to invite, who to talk to and when. While they promise to stay impartial, they still hold an influence over the final decision. This influence can be indirect. Most prospective owners ask these banks for loans. The rejection or approval of this loan can decide who ends up owning the club. Ownership of a football club comes with additional power. Club owners can vote on new rules for their league. They can approve sponsorship deals or broadcasting contracts. Or even a deal where the league sells future broadcasting rights to JP Morgan. This new relationship changes the dynamic of European football. Clubs and leagues are now in debt to these banks. Repayments add pressure to maximize revenues. Decision makers may do what's best for the bank before they consider what the fans or players want. With these US banks as advisors, clubs are turning to American sports business principles to catch up with the NFL and NBA. This changes how clubs look for sponsors, what players they buy, and even the contracts they give to players. Chelsea recently adopted a model of bringing young players in on incredibly long contracts. This spreads the transfer fee across several years, lowering upfront costs. A strategy lifted directly from Major League Baseball. Critics consider this an Americanization of football, something that makes many Europeans feel uneasy. But this influence goes beyond contracts and broadcasting deals. Don't forget the European Super League, JP Morgan's first attempt to change European football. The Super League wanted to create a closed competition for Europe's biggest clubs. This has two benefits. It guarantees that every match will feature big names, more money from TV, and it removes the biggest threat to the value of these teams, relegation. Negative fan reactions killed this idea, but it lives on. Florentino Perez, Joan Laporta and Andrea Agnelli all wanted to change European football. They believe that football is undervalued. They think they can make more money from it. This idea will not go away, especially if more outside investment comes into football. There will always be a pressure to find new ways to maximize the investment. As money becomes more important in football, the people who own it do as well.